Hello and welcome to Odd Sock Comics. I am your host, Odd Sock, and this is uh, the New Comic Book Day haul for Wednesday, May 22nd. And it's a couple days late. Uh, this was the first time that I had technical issues. I did record this on Wednesday night, and uh, I had some issues getting it put, uh, uploaded, and uh, the video just didn't, turned out to not work very well. So I'm recording again. It's a couple days late. I've been doing a lot of work in the area where I keep my comic books, uh, in, in my office area. And I spent, yesterday I had the day off work, spent some time cleaning it up and moving some stuff around and trying to get some more space. So I got some uh, space in front of a wall that I'm going to add some, uh, some shelves and some comic book art. This is going to become my comic book room. I'm really excited about it. My wife is very supportive. She recommended a couple of things to, to do with that. And uh, we, we started working on that. Uh, but, so I'm a little bit late, but I did want to talk about a couple of the comic books uh, that I got this week and make sure that I, I get this out here. Part of uh, being steady with this hobby is, is uh, you know, staying on top of things week over week. I don't want to ever build up a, a backlog, a pile of unread books or anything like that. If, if I've done that, I've lost interest and I need to stop buying comic books. Uh, so far that has not happened. But so, up front, I have my favorite comic book this week. All right. Yeah, it's my favorite comic book this week. Not the best read. It was all right, uh, but this is Venom number 14, and this is the Max Lim Battle Lines variant. And I, Carnage was, you know, I grew up in the 90s. Carnage was the, you know, ultimate chaotic evil. Uh, always loved him as a character, as a villain. Just, you know, he's, he's great character. Was always one of my favorites, and love anything that they do with him. I'm so glad that they're really emphasizing some carnage coming out right now. I'm looking forward to that. And this cover was just, it's an awesome carnage cover. Uh, I've, of course, I'm, I've been reading Venom, so this goes along with my Venom run that I've been reading, but it's one of my favorite uh, covers as well. So this is gonna, I'm gonna go put it up on my wall for a little while. I've decided that, that I'm leaving a little bit of space uh, for the new comic books, because when you do buy a book that you just love the cover, I don't want to just pack it away in a box. I want to appreciate it. I want to stick it up somewhere where I can see it for a little while. So I'm leaving a little bit of space. I'm going to add another shelf that's probably just for current run, you know, nice covers as I buy them. Just, just so that I can enjoy it. So that I can get the value. If, if I, especially if I buy something just for the cover, which is not the case with this book. But if I do buy something just for the cover, I will, uh, you know, put it up and enjoy it and get the value out of it that I spent on it. But so this was, like I said, Venom number 14. It was an alright book. It's a War of the Realms tie-in. I'm not following War of the Realms, so I don't really care, but they are, they're having fun with the, the new uh, Venom suit, and uh, I'm enjoying it. So, uh, it was, it was alright. Uh, I'm gonna go with two good reads coming right here, uh, but then, then I've got a couple of less interesting books. So probably the best read of the week was Silencer number 17. Maybe you can hear my two-year-old singing in the background. <laughs> um, ooh, sorry about that. The, uh, this is Silencer number 17. It's the second to last issue. They did a really good job of tying up, tying the ghost story up in a bow and, and delivering it. A uh, very satisfying approach. Uh, they addressed a couple of issues, brought families together. I've always liked the family aspect of this book. That's something that relates to me as a middle-aged comic book reader with a family, so I think that was cool that they, this is not, it's not just <laughs> single people. This is, this is a family with kids and it's a superhero involved with this family. Very cool, love the book. Unfortunately, it's ending on issue 18, uh, but hopefully they do something cool with the characters and can keep them tied into the universe and keep them active. Uh, because I did love Silencer as a character. I think cool assassin, ninja kind of superpowers. No, definitely superpowers, but really cool stuff going on. So I really like this book. Next up for Goodreads was Knights of the Golden Sun number seven. Now this one tied up the entire story. So uh, they did a good job of bringing it back to the very first uh, issue and tying up uh, everything that they started with. Uh, the storytelling is not perfect. The sequential art kind of, it, it's not done in quite, you know, a, a polished way that some really, you know, masters of storytelling in the comic book format are able to do. But it is fun. The mythos is interesting. You know, this biblical apocryphal mythos mixed in with uh, 
with some of this kind of superhero action. Very fun, very cool. They are going to do a second series in, they said that it's coming back in 2020. I will look forward to that. I enjoyed this whole run. This was a good read. All right, on to the less good reads. There's a theme here. <laughs> so first, this is Detective Comics number 1004. This is the Mark Brooks variant. I normally would not buy a Mark Brooks variant. I have had some negative run-ins with Mark Brooks, um, so I try not to support him. I know that sounds bad, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. When people uh, insult you, you stop giving them your money. But somehow last week, the, uh, the Mark Brooks variant, or a couple weeks ago, the Mark Brooks variant for, two, for 1003 was in my box and I, I ended up taking it home. Uh, so I, I picked up the, the other Mark Brooks variant because it makes this awesome uh, connecting variant. And I mean, I like, I do like Mark Brooks's art, but that's a great book. I mean, look at how beautiful that is. Yeah, this one's going to go on a wall as well because you got to put connecting variants next to each other. <laughs> They're they are meant to be displayed. But the book itself was a little bit. Uh, it was more narrative. It was like prose. It was just I can I can open it up because I've got it here. It was just page after page of boxes of text telling the story. Very little dialogue, just let's tell a story. Um, not the best use of a comic book. It's definitely dealing with the origins of the Arkham Knight, which are, eh, they're all right. It's, it's set up in a way that, you know, people can't wait to get the origin story. They want, they've got to do it as early as possible, but if they just set her up and unfolded it slowly, I feel like that would have been a better approach. I may be wrong, uh, but as an adult reader, that's something that I would have preferred. All right, so that's it for new comic books for this week. I picked up two back issues uh, because I wasn't able to go to the shop, my local shop last week. Uh, so they had a couple of back issues for me. And I always try to buy the back issues that he puts aside for me uh, because you know he's, he's setting up his uh, his orders based on what people have have asked for. So first up, I've got Batman 71. Complete waste of a book. Uh, most people already know the controversy around this. Batman is a wimp. He's depressed. He's not interesting. He's mean. He's abusive. Like, it, this is not heroic Batman, and that's not fun. Uh, Tom King is going to finish his Batman run a little early uh, with issue number 85. Just came out, I think, today or yesterday that he's going to be moving over to a separate book, a 12-issue miniseries <laughs> uh, called Batman Catwoman. I'm glad he's off of Batman. I think they're going to be switching Batman to monthly. That's what I understand. That'll be nice, too, on my pocketbook. I've been picking up every single issue. Uh, it's a little heavy, especially now that they're up to $3.99. But whatever. Um, glad to see. I will be happy when Tom King is off of Batman. Uh, I'm probably... I'll, I may pick up... Batman Catwoman number one, just to see what he decides to do with that, but I'm probably not going to follow through with that unless he changes the character somewhat. Hoping to see somebody who can write Batman as a hero and not a depressed person. Uh, yeah, not happy with this one. Almost done with Batman, but that good news that Tom King is off is keeping me going. <laughs> and then I picked up New Agents of Atlas uh, number one. This one, uh, I think, is a pretty good long-term spec play. I don't know what the print run was. I've heard that they uh, shipped double orders to everyone for free. They, they told everyone in advance that they were going to double their orders for this. But I think this is a book that, that uh, Marvel is really pushing. And there's good reason for it. Um, because, like, as with each new Marvel movie that has come out, the share of the total profits that comes from overseas uh, gets bigger and bigger, and they, they're relying on that more and more. They are much more of a global company now than, Amer than an American company, and so the new Agents of Atlas is all the Asian superheroes. Now, that's a little bit problematic to me in <laughs> an obnoxious way, but uh, they're definitely focusing on non-Americans, and I think that's okay. That's great. I will tell you the problem that I have with this book is that... 
not all Asians are the same. That's crazy to me. <laughs> like, oh, we're just going to make an Asian team. Like, I can see making a Chinese team or a Japanese team. That would make sense. But an Asian, like Filipinos have very little to do with Japanese. They're very different. So <laughs> that doesn't make sense to me. Uh, and, and they don't all automatically, you know, connect based on a shared background. Like, there's a lot of different stuff going on in Asia. It's like a third of the world's population. They're not all the same. And it kind of bothers me that they're like, oh, they're all the same. You know, you got from Pakistani, is there? Ms. Marvel isn't on here, but she's in the book. Um, so you've got some from Pakistani American to, Philip, uh, to uh, Filipino, Korean, um, what is, I can't remember. You got Chinese, all, all the different countries, all over the place. Um, it bothered me a little bit. Honestly, I didn't even finish reading it. I'll probably pack it away. I think that it could be worth 10 or $15 in the future because it is the first appearance of a team and there are a lot of first appearances in this book. I do think that they'll probably use it as intellectual property down the road for a movie or something else because it fits with the rest of their strategy. But I, I think it's a little cheap. I think it's a little uh, on the nose diversity wise. And uh, that's, that's stuff that I just don't care for. So I didn't read it, but I'll pack it away. Why not? So that's what I've got for this week. Not a lot, uh, trying to keep things fairly short here. I've got a lot that I have on my mind and I may do another video on that. The one piece of news is I'm going to be gone for the next two weeks. I'm traveling quite a bit. And uh, I just wondering if anybody out there lives in the, in the South. So I'm gonna be in Alabama um, North Carolina and Louisiana over the next uh, the next two weeks and I'm not even gonna be I think I get back halfway through two weeks from now uh, and uh, wondering if there's any good shops around there so I'm gonna be in the Huntsville area of Alabama I'm gonna be in Charlotte to Raleigh across that entire stretch which is most of the state uh, I'm gonna be in New Orleans so if you guys know of any good comic shops that I should hit up, anyone that has some interesting books, you all know, if you haven't seen it, uh, I am looking for a decent Jimmy Olsen number 134 or a Spotlight number 5. Those are books that I think, or an ASM 252. I, those are books that I think you can find if you know the right places to look. If you guys can think of a shop that I might want to swing by to see if they have a decent deal on one of those. Um, Anything that you can help me with, I'd appreciate it. Because I have a little bit of free time when I do these things. I spend quite a bit of time on the road. I usually have, I've got a day here and there for travel. And, I, and on those days, I, can, I can, can stop at a shop on the road. And I love doing that. And this is the first time that I've really had time to do that in the South. Uh, so if, if you have any recommendations, if you're from that area, let me know. I will, uh, if, if I don't get personalized recommendations, I go to Google and... I, that's been somewhat successful, but I know that there are little shops that don't always get the press that they need from Google. So, appreciate any help you can give me, and uh, I'll probably do a video from the road. It's going to be low quality. It's going to be from my car, uh, but I'll still probably do a video or two. I've got a lot on my mind. There's a lot of things that are going on in the comic book world, uh, speculation-wise, that I think are worth talking about, whether or not it's good speculation or whether it's, yeah, you might want to sit on this one. Um, and that's something that I want to talk about a little bit more, how to, how to analyze speculation. So that's coming. If I've got a few minutes in the car uh, waiting on something, I will I'll start a video up like that. Uh, the other good news is because I am changing my office up, uh, pretty soon I'm going to be on camera face and all. I'm not hiding behind the camera because I uh, am afraid to show my face. <laughs> I'm hiding behind the camera because my office was a mess. Uh, I used to have a gigantic uh, cryptocurrency mining computer taking up most of my office. Uh, we've moved that into a different room, and, and so now I have this open space. It's much more usable. Uh, it's much uh, more decorable, De decoratable. I can, I can put some stuff on the walls and, uh, and have some fun with this. So that's what we're working on in the next little while. So I will be showing my face here pretty soon. I know that you may have seen it in a reflection here and there. I am really not trying to hide. My kids want to come and, uh, and talk about the books that they like. I need to have my son uh, do
do some updates on his Marvel action comic books from IDW that are, it's an interesting piece there. I want to see if, if that's a good move or not. Uh, you know, if a 10 year old can, enjoys them, that's a good move, but when they're $3.99 a piece, I don't know if, if many 10 year olds are going to be reading them on an ongoing basis. So it's an interesting consideration of whether that's a good business move or if they're kind of missing the mark with that one. But that's all I've got for today. Thank you for watching and uh, good luck with your hunting this week.